anxietycenter.com. Hello, Adam. Oh, hi, Jim. How are you? Uh, very well, thanks. How are you today? Good. Good. It's, uh, it's interesting hearing your voice. I listen to a lot of the recordings that you did uh, uh, on the site, so it's nice to talk to you. Oh, it's a pleasure chatting with you. I look forward to our conversation today. I'm glad we're able to connect. So, Adam, why don't we just jump right in? Do you want to tell our listeners about your recovery? I think that uh, one of the main things that helped me uh, through the process was talking to somebody like Stacy that, that had gone through the same experiences himself. Um, I did have, um, you know, through the years, I, this struggling with anxiety wasn't anything new to me when I, uh, when I started to talk to Stacy, but I had talked to several people before that. And, um, you know, talking to somebody who hasn't gone through it themselves, you know, of course, they're able to give you quite, quite a lot of good advice, but I think it, it's quite different when you actually talk to somebody who has had those same experiences and knows how it feels and, and, and more importantly knows how or what it takes to, to get past it. Mm. Uh, um, and, um, you know, getting the reassurance from somebody that they can say to you, it, it does work. And, you know, these things are, uh, proven on uh, many different people, um, uh, really helps, uh, kind of keep good focus and, and, and like I said, reassure, uh, reassured me during the, the early stages that it was possible to get better. Hmm. Yeah, it's certainly important. Uh, I wish I had that opportunity when I was struggling just to, to be able to talk to someone who's been through it themselves, knows the history, know that it can be done because that confidence would have been important. So I'm glad you're finding that's helpful, you bet. Yeah, exactly. How long have you struggled with anxiety? Yeah, it's hard. Uh, it's hard to say exactly when it started. I think uh, you know when it became a problem for me was was back around two thousand two, two thousand three, something like that. Um, and of course, I had periods in my life where it was better and worse. Um, but um, you know, since around that time, it never really went away. Mm -hmm. It had always been a part of my life. Um, and I think one of the in interesting things is that until uh, I went through the process with Stacy. Um, uh, the th the unhealthy behaviors and the unhealthy patterns I didn't recognize them as being unhealthy I just kind of they were part of my approach to life and the way I had to deal with things um, and it's not until you get asked those questions and 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 learn different bits and pieces over time uh, because it does take time uh, that you realize that the things that you were doing that that you thought were normal uh, and the ways that you the mechanisms that you used to cope with things and and perhaps the approaches that I had to uh, to different challenges. Uh, were indeed unhealthy and were contributing to stress um, and contributing to anxiety. Um, and when you're when you've just lived that way uh, for for your whole life, really, it's 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 difficult to recognize that uh, those things aren't helping you. Um, um, and it's only after, like I said, when you get those questions asked to you that you realize you can t take a look at it from a different angle and realize that the things that you were doing just weren't helping you. Um, so that really was that was a help to me. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. And um, so when you were struggling with your anxiety, what kinds of symptoms did you have? Yeah, I mean, uh, the things that I struggled a lot with were, um, uh, you know, emotional ups and downs uh, quite a bit. You know, I'd have really bad days where I, you know, I was felt depressed, didn't want to get out of bed, um, very hopeless uh, feelings. Um, also physically, things like stiff neck and fast heartbeat and sweaty palms and, you know, the knot in the stomach. Uh, difficulty sleeping. Uh, one of the things that I really struggled with was, I guess, what was described on the site as, as brain fog. So kind of difficulty concentrating, difficulty making decisions. Um, uh, that was really tough for me um, because I, you know, I had uh, had a pattern of thinking that Stacy described as just right thinking. So everything had to be just right for me to feel good about my day. You know, if I if I woke up in the morning and I felt good, then you know, I could be happy and confident that the day was going to go okay. But if I woke up and I felt a few symptoms or I felt a bit kind of foggy or, or anxious, um, um, then I immediately kind of went over to the side where I thought, oh, this is going to be a terrible day. Whereas now I think the, one of the biggest changes after having gone through the process is that, you know, I, I feel more, I'm more accepting that some days are good and some days aren't so good. And I think that's just part of being alive and, and, and living life is that not every day can be good. And, and if you have the expectation that it's going to be, and if anything else happens that uh, doesn't meet up to those expectations, then you feel terrible. Um, you're going to struggle uh, through the rest of your life. Um, yeah. um, so um, I think that, you know, when I was in the early stages, I, I listened a lot to, to, the, to the calls that you had with some listeners and 
and read a lot on the site about you know what does recovery look like and and I think that before you experience recovery it's hard to imagine or picture for yourself what it does indeed feel like because uh, I guess for one it's not what you expect it to be and I don't think it's what you want it to be you know, when you start off um, for myself at least I felt a lot of the things that I wanted when I felt terrible uh, when I first started off uh, talking uh, with Stacy was that I wanted to go back to some kind of uh, idea of the way I felt before um, and I don't think it's possible to go back but having gone through the process I don't think I would have wanted to go back because um, if I had gone back to some time before I would have gone back to the um, a state where I had still those unhealthy behaviors and unhealthy ideas and I think by rather looking to go forward and, and taking accepting the situation that you're in and realizing that you need to deal with that situation and start with that starting point and look forward and see how can I learn how can I grow to come out the other end a stronger person I think that's a better attitude to have and, and I think that's the way it probably works out for a lot of people mm. I mean looking back now I would never have wanted to go back I, I'm so happy that I did actually go through it because it, it taught me a lot of lessons that I can use later in life mm -hmm. wow that's great yeah and so um, when you're looking at your recovery what do you think was the hardest part of it so far <sighs> acceptance um, there's a lot on the side about acceptance and, and I think that's one of those things that it's really hard to get it until you figure it out for yourself uh, well, of course with the help of a good counselor mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I, I I read a lot about acceptance in the beginning, and I was thinking, what what does that mean? How could I accept that I feel terrible? I mean, does, does that mean that I just give up? Uh, but of course, it doesn't. It means that, at least for me, that it's it's coming to the realization that you don't have you don't always have control over how your body reacts to different situations, or you really don't, um, and you also don't have control over many things in your life. Um, and if you try to exert control over things you don't have control of, you're just going to end up frustrated and more symptomatic and feeling worse. Um, and I think that's one of the great skills that I've learned through the process and, and, and something that I hope I'm able to maintain th th in the future is um, the best thing that you can do is just to, if you're feeling bad and, and, and you're feeling symptoms, to just say, okay, that's the way I feel today, you know, the, the harder you try to make it go away, the worse it's going to get. Um, and it's it's very counterintuitive, but the best thing to do is just kind of let go and, and kind of roll through it. Um, and more often than not, uh, at least in my experience, uh, that that allows those things to pass. And, and, and you go forward and, and you maybe the next day you feel better. And uh, after a while, you have more many more days that feel good than days that feel bad. And then all of a sudden you realize, wow, I feel pretty good. Mm -hmm. When you look back at your recovery, do you think you would have made the same progress without dealing with the underlying factors? Uh, definitely not. Um, you know, that's one of the things that uh, that I learned through the process as well is that um, early in the early days when I was still struggling quite a bit, I, I was looking very hard for some kind of fix or cure, um, find a next book that will give me the answer or talk to somebody or... Um, you know, cut this out of my life, add that to my life, change my behavior in this way. And I thought that I would get this quick fix and make the feelings go away. Um, but I don't think that, uh, at least I haven't found it and I haven't heard of anybody else who has. Um, I don't think there is a quick fix out there. Um, and I think that the only way that you can really feel better is to, like you say, work on those underlying factors. And that takes time and patience and hard work to 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 learn why you specifically react in the way you do and why you think in the way you do and why those behaviors are uh, contributing to more stress and therefore more anxiety um, and and like I say I mean there it's it's, it's it makes me a bit sad to see that there's so many it seems like uh, there's a lot of uh, of people out there who are looking for that kind of quick fix and they're maybe finding that it works for them in the short term but then they're going right back again to where they were um, and you really have to work at it I think and have that patience and willingness to work at it over time because it is such a significant change in your life uh, but it is worth it because if you do do that work then then, uh, then uh, you really uh, feel a benefit out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my 
com you know when I went through this as well I was looking for the same thing I think we're kind of conditioned that way by society that there are fast fixes but you're right I mean I didn't didn't find mine and it was work and I have to also commend you on your hard work it's not easy sometimes it's some of the hardest work we have to do but I share your your view it's you know for me I would never go back and undo it because I've just gained so much from it and it's, and it's one of the main reasons I've lasted anxiety disorder free for all these years is by doing that and you'll probably find the same because those tools once we have them they just stay and we use them and they work yeah yeah um, another question for you um, so when you were looking for help at that time what motivated you to, to join anxietycenter.com yeah I mean I uh, did a lot of Google searching at the time um, and uh, it was interesting because at the time I was struggling quite a bit with kind of be afraid for my health and I think that's one of the ways that my anxiety kind of manifested itself as I grabbed onto tangible things ooh that pain ooh that ache and what is that it could be this and that thing and I was doing a lot of searching on um, health anxiety how to overcome health anxiety and um, you know through the process of googling I came across the anxiety center and I I did a little bit of exploration and I saw that you know this of all the sites that I've been on uh, seemed like um, you know, very professional, uh, very thorough. Uh, there was a lot, very a wealth of information available there. Um, I took a look at the counselors that were there, and and uh, you know, it, it was great to see. Uh, I, I haven't really come across anything else where it was sort of something similar to the anxiety center, where you had you know a, a very a, you know eight, nine, ten more counselors who um, all share the same. Uh, background, i.e., they they have a struggle with anxiety themselves. That was something a bit unique, mm -hmm. um, and um, it just appealed to me as as uh, a good fit. Uh, um, and um, you know, I I think if I could put my finger on any particular aspect of it, I think it was the the fact that the coaches that were um, listed on the site had all gone through anxiety themselves, mm -hmm. and that really kind of piqued my interest. Um, and in hindsight, I think that was an excellent decision. Mm. Oh, great! And so obviously, it's worked for you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, where do you, in a zero zero to one hundred percent, where do you think you are in terms of recovery? Oh, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of <clears throat> uh, attaining what I feel is a um, quote unquote normal or healthy state of being, mm -hmm. I, I think I'm there. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, like I said earlier. Uh, what recovery looks like to me is very different probably from what recovery looks like from others. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's definitely very different from what I imagine it would be like. Um, um, but what I feel now is that I previously, though know, I mentioned that I had good periods in my life and bad periods in my life. Um, and I think the biggest difference before I had spoken to the anxiety center and quote unquote recovered and, and, and now is that um, before I was, I was, I felt good in the good times when there weren't significant challenges in my life, you know, when things were on an even keel, then it would be okay. You know, <laughs> I'd cope all right with the mechanisms that I had and, you know, things wouldn't bother me too much. And, uh, I, you know, I'd feel pr pretty good. Um, but then when things got a little bit more difficult, you know, stress at work or life changes like changing home or, you know, things that people face all the time, um, then, then I would fall to bits because I wouldn't know how to handle that stress, you know, um, and I'd be afraid of the symptoms that the stress caused. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, um, I can cope with, or I, I guess I accept the reality that life is not always consistent and there's challenges all the time that you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and even in the times that previously would have caused significant problem for me, you know, facing challenges, um, I'm able to cope with it now. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and that's not to say that I enjoy things that go wrong or enjoy negative challenges because nobody does, but I think I deal with them in a more healthy way. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a quite a big difference, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that was the same with me when I recovered. I just noticed I managed my life way differently. It doesn't mean we don't have problems. It does. And it doesn't mean sometimes we don't get upset because of them. We do, and we can but we manage the stressors and we manage them in a completely different way, which really eliminates the notion of anxiety disorder because now we're coping in healthy ways as opposed to unhealthy ways. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's, those are great comments. And uh, what other final comments would you like to leave with our listeners about your experience? Yeah, I mean, um, the biggest thing I think um, that I learned through the process is that you have to be patient. And uh, well, I guess there's two things. One is that you have to be patient. Um, 
it's really important to take the time and give yourself time to recover and to learn the things that you need to learn because it's a it's a long process. It can be uh, not for everybody, but some, some people might recover really quickly. But I, w- I would think that in 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 many cases it it does take time. Um, uh, and in order to have that patience, you need to have, you know, work on that skill of acceptance, um, be able to accept that, you know, this is the way I feel right now. Um, it's not the way I'm going to feel forever. And being able to accept the way I feel now will help me to feel better in the long run. Uh, you know, trying to fight it, figure it out, uh, it'll just make it worse and you'll just get more and more stuck. Mm-hmm. Um, and the second thing is, at least for me, listen, if you, if you, um, if you have made the choice, and I would recommend it to everybody to, to talk to a coach or counselor, um, listen to what they have to say. Because, you know, at least for me, um, I've always kind of, I think that's one of the issues that I had before is I thought I knew best, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and you filter what people say to you based on your own experiences, you know. So if, if a coach says to you, oh, you got to accept or, you know, you, you, this maybe behavior isn't the best or maybe you should think about it from this angle. I always had a tendency to think, ah, he doesn't know how I really feel or that doesn't really apply to me. Uh, That may not work for me. Mm -hmm. But listen and and give it a try because um, that thing that makes it unique in the anxiety centers that the coaches have gone through it, they have recovered and they know what works. Um, So, you know, tap into that experience and and give it a chance Um, because I think most people will find in hindsight that having gone through it, that what the coach was telling you was right. Um, and that it does work. Um, and at the very least, uh, one, most people know that what they're doing now doesn't work. So, uh, uh, you know, it's worth giving a shot to something different, even though it may, doesn't, doesn't seem like it makes a ton of sense to you at the time. Mm-hmm. That's good advice. Cause you know, <laughs> we do interact with a lot of different kinds of people and we find the people who really dig in and work at it succeed. But then, you know, I guess you're right. Everyone has their beliefs and things and it's the ones who are hesitant who actually don't apply it because they think to know better don't. Well, it's for good reason because our unhealthy behaviors is still there and they still cause problems. So you're, uh, that's, a, that's a great comment. You know, I have to, you know, based on the comments and the small amount of time I've talked with you, you really do have a good understanding of what's going on. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled that you found help and your life's back on track and you're experiencing rewards of it. And again, it certainly is a testimony to you in terms of hard work because, yeah, it's not easy and you've done it and uh, you're going to experience the success. And you'll also be able to pass it on to your family, too, because you'll have those tools and you'll be able to teach your kids those as well, which is great. Yeah, for sure. When you were sick with anxiety, where do you think your quality of life experience was? Zero to 100 percent. Oh, uh I would go up and down, but I would say, you know, between 30 and 50 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Because one of the things, you know, when you hear people who have recovered, a lot of people who are suffering think, well, that person never really struggled very hard. Yeah. But, you know, when you live it, you know, you really struggle hard. I know I just, you know, my life or quality of life experience was probably less than 5% a lot of the time when I was struggling just because my life was so restricted. It was awful. And, uh, again, when they hear you succeed and confident and all that, they just don't make the connection of how bad you struggle, but we often do, hey? Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, you dig yourself into a hole. Um, and, um, you know, it's it, it's it's hard for anybody who hasn't gone through it to imagine how it feels um, yeah. because it's not rational. And, 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 you know, if you approach it from a rational perspective, somebody who hasn't experienced it, say, oh, how could you allow yourself to get to that place or how, how could you see life in that way? It's so warped. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but when you're there and you're experiencing those feelings, then um, then uh, it's not rational. It doesn't make sense. But but in the moment, it makes the perfect sense to you. Um, but when you look back on it, you can you realize that you know those the ways that you were approaching things and the uh, the uh, perspectives that you had were were way off uh, and, and causing you know so much stress that that uh, that contributed to that anxiety. It really, it, it's very easy to get stuck in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And especially we find too that anxiety personalities are often very creative and intellectual. So we think a lot. And so for us to discover that our thinking is actually unhealthy is quite a shock. At least it was for me. <laughs> I yeah, thought, for sure. yeah, I thought I had everything under control until I realized, oh my gosh, I never even realized I did most of those things. So it's, it's, it's a nice change to be able to make those changes. The other thing too, your success speaks of is the support of your loved ones, because as you know, it's also hard on them going yeah. through anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it's, uh, you know, it's, um, it's important to have uh, people around you. Um, and if you, if, if, uh, you know, not everybody's as fortunate to have, uh, people around them all the time, but it's, that's why, you know, it's great to have a counselor that you can, uh, have somebody to talk to, share your feelings with. 
mm-hmm. uh, give you the feedback. Um, one of the things I think that's important that uh, that I read on the site is that you know I can see at the early stages. You know, you it's a lot of people have a tendency to use their their closest uh, you know their maybe your parents or your uh, spouse or your friends or whomever you know as as sort of as counselors. Um, um, and I think that's why it's important to have a um, a counselor like from the anxiety center because I think there are certain it's, it's great to have loved ones who are really patient with you and who are, are listening to you. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's important not to um, u- use your loved ones as counselors, not to rely on other people to reassure you all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, especially with, for example, you know, if you're worried about your health and you're always asking your loved one, oh, you, what does this feel like to you? Or, you know, uh, do you have a do I have a bump here? Or, you know, have you ever had this? And uh, you, you, you got to be careful not to push it too far. Um uh, um, and, and it's not always that your loved ones are equipped with the skills that, that's, that are required to, uh, to help you, uh, whereas a counselor is. Um, so, uh, you know, it's great if you have loved ones, uh, talk to them, share your feelings, but uh, they're not counselors, and that's why you have counselors. Yeah, yeah you bet. Yeah, good comments. And uh, for those who are looking at, looking at therapy as an option, maybe they've struggled for a number of years, they've tried self-help, and they're still back in the same spot. What would you say to them? Go for it. I mean, uh, it's the best decision I've ever made. Um, I think that, you know, I think a lot of people can get help from self-help and from books and so on. I think that, you know, if you're really struggling, then what we talked about earlier, where you filter a lot of the information that you take in based on your perspective on life, you know? Um, and I think that, um, that at least I, you know, I tried a lot of the self-help books and so on beforehand and, you know, it would, I would pick out, pick out a little piece here and there that might help me, but uh, a lot of them promised, uh, a cure, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them promised quick fix and, and they don't deliver and then you just end up more frustrated. Mm -hmm. Um, and as well, I mean, if you are in the thick of anxiety and, you are feeling those feelings and you're thinking fearfully and you're filtering uh, the information that comes in, it's really hard to recognize, it's hard to recognize the state that you're in and it's hard to recognize the behaviors and, and actions and things that are causing you stress and causing you anxiety. Um, so it's, that's when you really need the help of somebody who's gone through it and who can look at it at, f- objectively from the outside to help you know, steer you in the right direction and ask the right questions. Mm-hmm. You know, we mentioned at the website the most effective way to recover is with the combination of self-help and uh, therapy. And I mean, that's been my personal experience. And would you agree with that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, especially g- good self-help. I mean, uh, the resources that are available in the Anxiety Center are great because they're uh, they're they're written by by you guys and and by qualified counselors and and uh, and others and. Um, you know, I think at least in the beginning, and I think this is an experience that's shared by a lot of people who have anxiety is that, you know, you tend to Google a lot of stuff and try to figure out answers to a lot of questions. And, you know, on the web, there's tons of stuff, uh, good and bad. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you'll find a whole bunch of things that will probably not reassure you, but rather make you feel worse. Mm. Um, but the good thing about the anxiety center is that at least, especially in the early stages where you do need a lot of reassurance, um, it's a safe place, really. It's a place where you know that you can get good uh, considered uh, professional information that's uh, that's written by people who know what they're talking about, uh, and not somebody who's just trying to uh, get hits on their website by having the most sensational uh, stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so, um, you know, use the use the information that's there. That's my recommendation. Um, but if you're really struggling and 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 you're not uh, you're not uh, making it on your own with self help, then don't hesitate to. Uh, to get in touch with uh, with with a coach or a counselor who can help you through it. Mm. Oh, well, oh, thank you for that recommendation. We certainly appreciate it. One final question. Uh, so you know you've, you've obviously come across the chemical imbalance notion and the genetic predisposition notion about anxiety disorder. What's your view on that now? Yeah, I mean, um, I think it comes back again to to what we were talking about earlier in the call, which is that I think society likes to promote the idea of a quick fix or a cure. Um, I think that it's a very attractive option to take a pill or um, similar things um, with, the, with the goal of you know, making it go away. Um, 
And I can see now, having gone through the process, that it's obvious that it's the behaviors and the um, the underlying factors. You know, how what did you learn growing up? Uh, what's your perspective on life? How do you see yourself? Um, how do you react to certain situations? How do you cope? Those are the things that make the difference. I mean, um, if you're experiencing significant, overwhelming physical symptoms. And I think taking medication can help you through that early stage so that you can clear your head enough to be able to deal with the issues. Um, but that's not a cure uh, because it's just treating the symptom. It's not curing the, the, the problem. Uh, so I, I can't speak for everybody because I only know my own experience. But I think, you know, there's no way to get better without uh, other than just working at it. And uh, taking the time learning because you have to learn a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, Changing behaviors takes a lot of work, um, um, but the best thing you can do is just have the patience and just be willing to go for it, um, and be willing to go through good days and bad days. And you know, one of the things that that I learned through the process as well, which is related to this, is that you know, recovery isn't a linear process. I think a lot of people, like you say, uh, who suffer from anxiety are you know uh, logical thinkers. Uh, uh, you know, they like things to be in order, A type personality, so to speak. You expect, you know, you, I do A, therefore B will happen. Um, but it doesn't work that way, you know, because there's, there's so many different factors involved. Um, you might make, you know, three steps forward, one step back, three steps forward, two steps back, you know. Um, just kind of stick with it and, uh, you know, give yourself a break, you know, realize that, you know, you're learning something new. It takes time. You're just good at it. Some days you're not good at it. Others, uh, you know, if you approach it with a, you know, a, an attitude of acceptance and just kind of relax, try to relax a little bit, mm-hmm. and not give yourself such a hard time, then uh, I think you know you'll get there. Mm-hmm. Well, great advice. Unfortunately, our connection is breaking, so we'll, we'll probably have to wrap. But I, I wanted to thank you again uh, for your well thought out answers. Uh, you know, I, again, you're a testimony to hard work, and you're going to succeed. And you know, your life is certainly going to be an all in your control now because of the tools you've learned. So I just think it's great. And I certainly want to tell you how much we appreciate you taking the time to have this conversation. I'm sure it's going to be a tremendous support for those who are listening and struggling and who want to accomplish the same kind of success that you have. So thanks so much again, Adam. No worries. Thanks, Adam. You take care. You too, Jim. Thanks. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.